everybody. Amen. Why don't we all stand together, maybe go find somebody, shake their hand, welcome them into the house of the Lord on this Pentecost Sunday morning. Amen. Somebody say Pentecost. Pentecost. Amen. This is the birthday of the church in the New Testament, the book of Acts, where it all began, the outpouring of the Holy Ghost in an upper room, the promise of the Father being received. Aren't you glad that we serve a God that keeps his promises? Anybody here today that he's filled you with the Holy Ghost? He's made a difference in your life. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. He's worthy. It would be the will of God for you to leave full of the Holy Ghost. If you don't have the Holy Ghost, God can fill you up today. If you're a little empty, God can fill you up today. Amen. If you want the Lord to pour out his spirit in this place one more time, we just lift our voices as we clap our hands and just pray and ask the Lord to send it on down in this service.
Amen. Does anybody want the windows of heaven to be opened up? Praise God. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Somebody say in earth as it is in heaven. Amen. We can have the windows of heaven opened up and poured out into our service today. You say, how do we do that? Praise is what opens the doors of heaven because when the praises go up, it opens up the doors because the Bible says his glory comes down. Amen. And I want the presence of the Lord to infiltrate every heart, every soul, every situation. And so we've got to praise. Look at your neighbor say, praise him. Amen. Praise the Lord. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer and several, several needs and people that need prayer today. I got phone calls and text messages this morning of people not feeling well. Sister Louise uh, was very dizzy this morning. We'll lift her up in prayer. Also, uh, Brother Tyler Hysaw is going to the doctor today. Let's lift him up in prayer. Sis Kuhn uh, needs prayer. Uh, continue praying for uh, the Lambert family, the family of Brother Arliss Wheeler's. His service was this week. Also, Dorothy Dykes, her family. Lift her up in prayer, their, their family up in prayer. I want to believe God to give peace to them. And the church said amen. Uh, also, uh, Sister Elaine Nichols was uh, put in Corinth Hospital this week with pneumonia. I want to lift her up in prayer. And then uh, just yesterday evening, Brother Bill Isbell put in the hospital in Tupelo. I want to lift him up in prayer that God would touch him. Sister Cutie May, I want to pray that God would minister to her. Amen. So, so many needs. Teresa Chapman needs prayer today. And we're just believing God for her healing. Greg Hutchison. Sister Anita needs a touch in her life today, in her body. I want to pray that God would touch her, touch Sister Allen and Sister Isabel, uh, where they are in the uh, home, in the nursing home. Uh, Sister Audra Cook, lift her up in prayer. Amen. We serve a good God. He's a faithful God. Amen. Brother Johnny Lindley needs strength in his body today. Amen. So, so many needs. And I know without a doubt there are others that are here today that you have needs in your life and you've, you've managed to make it to the house of God today. And some had to push through a lot of pain in your body and a lot of stuff going on in your life, but you're here today. And I want to tell you, God is not going to let you come in vain today. God's going to minister to you. When I believe that, God's going to work some things out for your good in your life. Come on, can we lift our hands and lift our faith? God, we, we're trusting you. God, we are leaning upon you. So many in our church family, Lord, that are hurting today, God, that are sick today. God, I pray, Lord, that you would minister to them. Let them feel your presence where they are. God, for those that may be watching right now, God, I pray, Lord, that you would minister your presence in their room where they are, God, what a, in their vehicle, whatever they need in their life, God. If, more importantly, God, if they need you, Lord, if they haven't repented of their sins, if they haven't been born again of the water and the spirit, Lord, prick their hearts today. God, that they would search your scriptures, Lord, and find the truth that you have for their life, the promise you have for them. Lord, on this Pentecost Sunday, God, let there be a personal Pentecost experience, Lord, by everyone here, Lord, by everyone that, that may watch today, God. Let them seek after that for your word promises, Lord, that we will find you if we'll seek after you. God, I pray, Lord, that you would let your anointing, God, fill this sanctuary today. God, that there wouldn't be one person leave untouched or unchanged by your presence. God, I will be careful to pray you in Jesus name if you believe the Lord's going to minister come on just declare that over your life right now could you just lift your hands and say Lord I trust you well I know life is throwing you some curveballs maybe but you can still stand on the word of God and trust him he's faithful he's not going to leave you by yourself today he'll involve himself in what you're going through thank you Jesus thank you for being a faithful God Let's declare him great today. Lord, you're worthy of our worship today. You're worthy of us lifting our faith to you today. God, it's in you that we can find hope, God. It's in you that we can find healing today.
you go ahead and praise him right now is he worthy of all the praise honor and glory if he's worthy why don't you praise him right now with your might thank some more of that if you will you are alpha you are greater says give unto the Lord glory and strength give unto the Lord. glory due unto his name amen amen and I tell you what can I tell you what I feel I like what I feel somebody can leave here changed today somebody can leave here healed today financial burdens family matters it can happen today you may be seated momentarily. I promise to get out of the way quickly because I know pastor's got a usual as a uh, supercalifragilisticexpialidocious message. That means awesome, especially awesome message. But I'm going to say this, take extra 30 seconds, and I'm going to be reading the Word of God. Thank all of y'all who came yesterday, the text messages, the phone calls, the letters, the card. But I'm going to tell you, if you look back there and see that little woman in this, and you're looking at a miracle. If it wasn't for him, we wouldn't be here today. And I don't even know if I'd still be alive today for him. I'm reading out of Hebrews 12, 29. You be, keep your seat. Uh, you know, I don't pick on anybody, Pastor. I'm going to have you here in a minute. For our God is a consuming fire. Now, that's a scripture I want to be using. And uh, Brother Harper preached the other night, Tuesday night. Let's build a fire. And I'm going to use the word fire today. And... and the Bible that I read you, it says for God to be a consuming fire means that he can conquer the enemies that's greater than you. God has a power to drive out those who st stands against us, and God brings victory over any. Come on now. I didn't say one. I didn't say two. I said any of the circumstances or enemy that faces you. But when we are persecuted... For the cause of Jesus Christ, he will deal with every one of our enemies. What am I saying? I don't care what you're fighting. I don't care what it is. God is a consuming fire. He will bring you out and he will take care of it. Now, fire, I ought to pick on you, I guess. Fire has four elements. Pastor, would you come? Fire has four elements. You got lights? You're supposed to be prepared, brother. Don't smoke. <laughs> <laughs> and if you notice, I, I told him I didn't want him dripping nothing on the carpet down here. 
Fire has four elements. What is it? Heat, air, oxygen. What's the other? Fuel. Okay, the word in the modern technology as far as the heat is actually called light. Jesus is the light of the world. But for it to burn, for him to burn, if you will, light that, please. For that to burn, and I'm going to get out of my notes momentarily, but for it to burn, it has to have the light, it has to have the fuel, and it has to have oxygen. The Bible says, let everything that has breath, praise the Lord. So what am I saying? There's three sides to a fire triangle. No, it's four. Tetrahedron. What is tetrahedron? The reason I want him to light this, if you could see and you can't, right above here you see a little flame jumping. That's tetrahedron. It's called chemical chain reaction. What are you really saying? I'm saying, ladies and gentlemen, this is the fuel. The light is Jesus Christ. And the oxygen is a praise that we put up. But you know the only, only thing that will put this out is cut the oxygen off, take the fuel away, or dirt. I'm not calling you dirty. Yesterday was Saturday. It was supposed to be a day for bath. But dirt is a thing called sin. And if sin comes in, the light can't burn. So what am I saying? When we give ourselves to God, we create a chemical reaction called tetrahedron, but in life it's not. But as you see that fire jumping up, Pastor, and you see it going up here, that tetrahedron, when we get filled with the Holy Ghost, baptized in Jesus' name, repent of our sins, that tetrahedron comes out, and it begins spreading all over Boonville, Prentice County, in the church. And we'll see things begin to happen for His glory. What are we talking about? I'm talking about that's when revival starts. That's when God starts to move, when you praise Him. Be the fuel and let him be your light. Amen. And the church said amen. I'm going to keep this because he don't need it no more. Don't, nobody be coming after church asking me for a light now. We're going to pray for deliverance for anybody that needs that. And the church said amen. Uh, praise God. Thank you, Brother Wallace, for sharing that. And I do want to echo... Uh, what he said on behalf of him and Sister Wallace and say thank you on behalf of this church family for those that came yesterday to honor them and to give honor where honor is due. Uh, we appreciate this great cup. I know we celebrated back in January and uh, was able to uh, get them a weekend away, but for those that was able to come yesterday, thank you all so much. What a great, great couple and a great part of our church. Amen. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. It's good to have all of you with us. You can be seated if you like. Ushers, I want y'all to go ahead and make your way and prepare to wait on us for our Sunday morning giving. Thank you to this church family for being faithful with your tithes and your offerings uh, to help us accomplish the work of God in our local church as well as around the world because of your missions given. Amen. This is a giving church, and I want to say thank you for your faithfulness. Um, as the ushers are coming, I also want to just quickly say it's good to have uh, Sister Joanne with us today, and I know Sister Faye was glad to have her with her all this week. Just a great, great day. And uh, Brother Kerry, why don't you bless the offering this morning? Amen. As you're giving, let me also uh, just quickly say thank you to everyone that came to Revival. Didn't we have an outstanding Revival? Amen. Brother and Sister Harper. And uh, we had four filled with the Holy Ghost. Three got baptized. Amen. It was just building and building. And uh, I'm like, well, let's just keep this going. Uh, but with some funerals and things that we had uh, the rest of the week. Amen. The Lord always knows. And we, I promise you they will be back. Amen. And we want the, the Lord to use them in Panama City where they are this weekend ministering in that church. And so let's be in prayer for their revival there. Also, um, J. Crew is going to be selling some cakes and some other items in the foyer in the evening service. Um, and so if you would just be mindful of that, bring a little extra cash with you. They take check, card, 
Uh, no, but I do want to say, quickly say thank you to everyone that went by their uh, bake sale they had in front of Dollar Tree yesterday. They did a great job raising some funds there for their Bible quiz team. And uh, so I appreciate their sacrifice on a Saturday in the church. Said amen. And then tonight, everybody say tonight. tonight. Amen. It's, uh, I want us to be at church tonight. Come expecting God to do a great, great work, and I know that he will. This week we will have midweek on Wednesday night at 7, so come and be faithful in midweek. Uh, Bible quiz and practice Thursday evening, and then next Sunday is the last Sunday of the month. We have a 10 a.m. service only, so be mindful of that. And then a week from tomorrow is Memorial Day, and we are going to be gathering at Longleaf Pavilion at Piney Grove, and we're going to have a great time together. And everyone is invited. Invite your family or friends if they want to come and be a part of that. We're going to have barbecue sandwiches, hot dogs, baked beans, slaw, potato salad, chips, and drinks. And we'll have a great time together. It's not going to cost you anything but time. Come and be out. Come and be with us if you would like to help bring some things. My wife and then be getting with you, and uh, we will uh, certainly welcome that. Birthday today, Sister Betty Lambert has a birthday, so we celebrate with her. She's turning 24. Praise God! And uh, so we celebrate her 24th birthday today. And uh, we also give honor to Sister Jimmy Ann. Today would have been her uh, 78th birthday, I believe, today. So we celebrate. Amen. I want to keep Brother Tulin in our prayers today as this week has been a, a tough, tough week for him and his family. So let's lift them up in prayer today. Also, Wednesday, Sister Brenda Barnes and Brother Jerry Kelton have birthdays. And so we celebrate with them. Appreciate uh, them. Friday, Melissa Kennard has a birthday celebrate with her and then saturday i believe Derek gann has a birthday so just a, a week full of birthdays amen but today we're in the presence of the lord and uh, as we get ready for the word today i know we've already stood and we've sat back down but can we stand again amen and we're gonna just let the enemy know when i shout i know why i'm shouting it's not because of what i'm going through it's not because of all the the pressures but when I shout, I just want you to know I'm shouting for Jesus. And when I lift my voice and when I worship and when I praise him, and when the world looks at me, they may not understand my shout. They may not understand why I can have joy in the midst of what I'm going through. Amen. But I'm not worshiping for this world. And we can even take it a step further this morning, and we can look up and down the road that we're on and those in front of us and those behind us, and we can declare today that I'm not doing it for you. And I hope you're not doing it for me. But, Lord, this is your day. Amen. And I want you to help me today. And Lord, I want to give it all to you. Let's worship the Lord in song as we prepare for the word today.
just no telling what you're gonna do. In that moment, Jesus gets a hold of you. But Let's testify if he's changed your life, if he's made you a new creature. Amen. That old man may not have been able to testify, but you're here today and you can testify. He's done some great things for you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. My chains are gone. I've been set free. Amen. We've got a testimony. Amen. Remain standing, if you will. We're going to a familiar passage of Scripture in a Pentecostal church, Acts chapter number 2. And we're going to go also to Romans chapter 12 and verse number 1. Uh, Mr. Joe, it's good to have you in service with us today. Thank you so much for being here. Amen. Acts chapter 2, verse number 1. And we'll also look at Romans chapter 12 and verse number 1. Amen. It says, When the day of Pentecost was fully come, they, everybody say they, were all with one accord in one place. Um, look at your neighbor and say, they were there. They were there. The Bible said, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were. I know it ends with sitting, but I like to just see that they were there. <laughs> Verse 3, and there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it set upon each of them. Somebody looks at your neighbor and say, them people that were there. Verse 4, and they, tell somebody else, those that were there, were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Those that were there received the promise of the Father, the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of God living inside of them, this treasure in earthen vessels. Romans chapter 12 and verse number 1 Paul admonishes the church there. He said, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies. Somebody finish that for me. A what kind of sacrifice? A living sacrifice. Go ahead. Holy. Uh-huh. Say 
Somebody looks at your neighbor and say, he just wants you to show up. Amen. I beseech you, brethren, brothers and sisters, show up. And it's not always going to be easy. Sometimes it's a sacrifice. But when we show up, God shows up. Amen. Today I want to preach to us from this thought, presented at Pentecost. Presented at Pentecost. If you're going to help me, would you lay your Bibles down? Can we lift up our hands, lift our voices again? Ask the Lord to minister through his word to us. Come on, can we make that personal today? God, I want you to minister to me today. God, I want you to minister to my brother today, my sister today. God, those that may be watching, Lord, let your spirit minister to them. God, for it's not your will that any should perish, but that all should come to everlasting life, that life that's only found through your spirit. In Jesus' name, and the church said amen. Amen. You can be seated. It's Pentecost Sunday. I know it's been a long week for most, uh, but we just come off of an awesome revival. And the last thing we need today is to not continue in the vein of what we tapped into Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday of last week. I believe God is just looking and anticipating. He said, my goodness, that was a place I could pour out my spirit on Tuesday. I think he's looking on Sunday and saying, is there still somewhere in Boonville? that I can pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. And I believe that this is the right place, and I believe this is the right time. If you believe that, would you just give the Lord a hand clap of praise? Amen. Pentecost Sunday at a Pentecostal church. We still believe in people experiencing the infilling of the Holy Ghost in 2021. Just the same way they did in the book of Acts. And the church said, Amen. We still believe it is with the evidence of speaking with other tongues, just like it was in the book of Acts. I'll take it a step further and say that we believe and further declare that it is essential that we receive the gift of the Holy Ghost for salvation. For Jesus said, except a man is born of the water and the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. He said, if we have not the Spirit, he said that you're not of mine, that we're none of his. And so it's important that we have the Holy Ghost living and moving and leading in our life. Somebody say Pentecost. You know, when I say Pentecost this morning, I'm not necessarily speaking of a religious organization or denomination, although we are a Pentecostal church, but not only because of what's on our sign, but because of what's in our hearts. I'm talking about an experience with the Spirit of God, the promise of God, amen, the Spirit of, if I say God's Spirit, living inside of us. Do we understand how powerful that promise is to us as individuals? That it's more than just a one-time experience that we come to an altar and receive or we come into a sanctuary and we feel, amen, that the, the Pentecost, the Holy Ghost is about much more than that. We just had four during our revival receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost that made five in the month of May and we give God praise for that. Amen. We're just believing God's going to continue to do that. And... The reason why I believe that, because Pentecost is still relevant and still right today. It's not just something for the book of Acts. It's not just something for the apostles, as there were more than 100 in the upper room, 120, so there was more than 12 there. So it's more than just for the apostles. It's more than just for those in the Bible, because I can testify today that he's filled me with his spirit. And there's others here today. If you have the Holy Ghost, would you just wave your hand? Amen. There's others who can testify that God still does that in the day that we live. It's still relevant. It's still right. It's powerful. Somebody say Pentecost is powerful. Amen. And if there's ever been a time where we need to introduce Pentecost to our city, Amen. We need to introduce it in the hour that we live as we close in on these last days of our time upon this earth. Amen. And that begins with 
you and me presenting ourselves together in one mind and one accord. Amen. And when we present ourselves in that way, that creates an atmosphere that God will present himself in a great way. Amen. I want just to get across to us on this beautiful Sunday morning that I, I know it seems like maybe that, Pastor, why are you, you, you kind of coming straight at us today? And, Pastor, why are you, why are you getting excited? Number one, because I'm still excited about revival. Amen. But also, I believe that this is the greatest hour for the church. And this is exactly what this world needs to see. It don't need another church door to open and to go in where nobody ever gets up off of their pew. It don't need another just dry worship service where nobody ever lifts their hands or, or lifts their voice but, but this world needs to hear a cry of worship coming out of the church of the living God that says Lord I know that your spirit is enough for what we're facing in amen I assure you this world and that unholy spirit attached to the culture we live in doesn't mind representing itself amen and so this morning, with everything in me, on a Pentecost Sunday, which is any day, any Sunday, but today especially on Pentecost Sunday, amen, I don't want to have false advertisement on our sign out there that, that it's okay to worship and it's okay to lift your voice and clap your hand. That's what people expect of a Pentecostal church. You don't have to be worried about who may be watching online or who may see you lift your hands or who may see you cry tears of joy and tears of excitement. It's okay to do that. It's okay. Look at your neighbor and say, it's okay. Tell somebody else, it's okay to be Pentecostal. Amen. What is hurting myself at this coming from the pew? Well, that's awesome. I, I, I can hear myself in the monitor, then I just heard myself. Well, that's. <laughs> Who said you can't be at two places at the same time? Amen. But we need to get the bands of bondage off of our boldness. And say, God, if you want me to be a bold Christian, then I'll be a bold Christian. If you want me to be a bold worshiper, I'll be a bold worshiper. It doesn't matter if you've been a quiet Christian all your Christian life. Amen. Today can be a day where you turn the tide. And it's okay if nobody's ever seen you worship expressly before. It's okay if nobody's ever seen you run the aisle or, or nobody's ever seen you lift your voice. Go ahead and do that today and just see what God might use you to protect that kindling, that fuel. Amen. We need more people. Some here, maybe some that may be watching or some that may be watching longer or later in the day or tomorrow or the next day. Amen. Make a decision and stick to it concerning your relationship with God. We don't need wishy-washiness. You can't serve two masters. The Bible says a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. We should never see unstable Christians. And we live in a culture of Christianity where it seems like there's more and more unstable people being produced. And that's not the will of God. God wants you to have stability in your walk with Him. Amen. And I, I don't say this in any disrespectful way, but, but as we are filled with the Holy Ghost and God delivers us out of a sinful lifestyle, we shouldn't find ourselves walking after the Holy Ghost with any kind of spiritual devices like a, a, a cane or a walker. And again, I'm talking about spiritual things. We're always limping, trying to make it in our walk with God. There needs to be something in us where we understand the power that happens inside of us when we are filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. There, there is power in Pentecost. There's power. Amen. They're still right and they're still wrong. Look at your neighbor and say, choose this day. Amen. we got a choice to make who we're going to serve. Is it going to be our flesh and the pleasures of this life? Or is it going to be heaven and the will of God that he has laid out for us in his word? Choose you this day who you will serve. It kind of makes me feel like one of those announcers. Ladies and gentlemen, in this corner, we have alcoholism. And I'm not here to... 
today to demean anything anybody's going through. That's powerful. There's, man, that's powerful stuff. Addiction to things of this world is powerful. Amen. In this corner, we got drug abuse. And now, boy, it's powerful. Drug addiction is powerful. Pornography is powerful. The things that people are struggling with is very real. It's very powerful. I'm not here to d- diminish that. Uh, that infidelity in relationship is powerful. Divorce is powerful. So I'm glad he ain't calling all that stuff. Cancer is powerful. Depression is powerful. Unbelief is powerful. Financial woes are powerful. Homosexuality is powerful. I understand that the odds are stacked against many that are here and that that may be watching. But let me remind you this morning, there's also another corner in this wrestling ring of life. It's not just a corner of all the things that the enemy has and all the power that he has. But there's another corner of this thing. And the Bible says, if God be for me, then who can be against me? So what are you saying, Pastor? I'm saying that somebody needs to get out of this corner of the enemy and step into the corner of the one that can deliver you out of what you're going going through amen just get in and stay in the right corner we're in a battle yes we are but if you're not on the Lord's side you're fighting to lose it's time that we stand up and wake up and be presented in this present time you say, Pastor, we tried that. Well, let me say it like this. If we want the church represented in this hour, well, just, just this morning it just kind of hit me, and I don't know, but this is the way my mind works. Well, let's, let's split that up a little bit, and let's be re-presented. Try again. You say, I gave it a shot, Pastor, and I fell right back in some of the same stuff I was in. Well, don't stay away from the church, and don't stay away from an altar. Rejoice not against me, oh, my enemy. When I fall, I shall arise. I will still be presented. Amen. I I will be represented. Whatever it takes, God, I want to be on your side. I want to be on your side. Amen. We need to be represented and represented. On this Pentecost Sunday. I mean, let there be a shifting. Let there be a stirring in your faith today that would cause you to leave the corner of carnality and step into the corner of Jesus Christ. Choose you this day. I'm not saying that you're not in a fight, and I'm not saying that what you're fighting is not powerful. But stay in the right corner. We, we got this little saying, you know, where people, I even saw something recently where somebody was talking about stay in your lane. I understand what the meaning of that is, but what I'm trying to tell you today, stay in your corner. If you don't want the voice of the enemy having an impact on the way this, the result of what's going on in the middle of the ring here, then don't go to the corner of the enemy. Because if you're in the corner, you're not going to hear And that's why the devil's always trying to push you into this corner. Because if he can get you where you can't hear the voice of God, you're fighting to lose. And so sometimes you just got to shrug it. I don't care what kind of grip that he has on your shoulders. I don't care what kind of nothings he's whispered in your ear. Sometimes you just got to say, I don't. I'm not where I'm supposed to be. I've got to get out of this corner. I mean, I've got to get back on the Lord's side. Some, there's a measure of faith that God has given you. Don't let the devil tell you that there's nothing drawing you. God put in every man a measure of faith, and that is calling out to be reunited with him. Amen. Just make up in your mind. I didn't come to where I am today to die. I didn't get to where I've gotten to, to give up. To quit. I didn't get through everything I've been through to fail now. 
So, devil, I want you to know I'm willing to pray harder than I've ever prayed. I'm willing to fast longer than I've ever fasted before. I'm willing to worship with more intensity than I've ever worshipped God before. I'm willing to read my Bible more than I've ever read the Bible before. I'm willing to live my life with more conviction than I've ever lived my life with before. I'm willing to forsake the things of this world and follow after. If one can put a thousand to flight and two can put ten thousand to flight, I mean, that's just about the population of our area. I mean, if I could get everybody on board, we can do a great work. But if I can just get a few of you to say, greater is he that's in me than he that's in this world, and we're not ashamed to present ourselves at Pentecost today, then there can be a change happen in our world. We can do it. I said we can do it. We need to be presented today. Today. The Lord's Day. Pentecost. Doesn't matter what kind of spirit you might be wrestling with. Make up in your mind. My wrestle is not going to destroy my worship. My wrestle isn't going to silence my praise. All the stuff that I'm going through right now is not going to keep me from still lifting my hands and declaring that God is still true and let every man be a lie. God, I come before you today with boldness in my heart. And I've come before you with a knowledge that there is no weapon formed against me that will prosper. Not because somebody else told me that, but because your word tells me that. That I can be and I will be victorious in you. Some are just a worship away from getting the Holy Ghost. Just, just a worship away. That's what happened during revival. It was just the worship intensified. Every service. What Tuesday night was just, it was just building and building and building. And God poured out his spirit in a mighty way. Worship should never destroy. Or our wrestle should never destroy our worship. Amen. Say, well, pastor, why should I praise him? If you're here today and you're saved, you need to praise him because you're saved. Hello. <laughs> Don't look at me asking for a reason to praise God. Amen. If he's ever healed your body, you need to give him some praise. If he's ever brought you out of a pit and just. You say, well, I can't think of any of those things, pastor, so I think I'll just be content just kind of hanging out. Well, Brother Wallace has already said it. If you've got breath in your body, if you can't do it for what you know God's done for you, then you need to understand that that inhalation and exhalation of air called breath is because he gave it to you. And let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Amen. It may be a sacrifice to push past your flesh and lift your hands and clap your hands and lift your voice. It might be. That's why the, Paul told the church at Rome, he said, present your bodies a living sacrifice. Amen. Just, just worship. We've got to present ourselves. It's more than religion. It's more than church membership. Hey, look, we, wanna, we want our church to grow. I promise you that's why we're here. We want our church to grow. Amen. We want our membership to grow. And it's growing. Amen. And we're thankful for it. Amen. But it's more than the church membership. It's more than shaking my hand or some other preacher's hand. Look, I, I love people, so I like shaking hands and hugging necks and high-fiving and all that. But shake my hand until it turns dark outside and you're not going to go to heaven because you shook my hand. And you're not going to go to heaven because you signed a piece of paper. Amen. You'll go to heaven because you present yourself before God and you allow God to present himself before you. And you say, let's link this thing up. And so now it's God living in you. And it's all that stuff's passed away and this new stuff that I am. Amen. Praise God. We can't take enough communion to get us to heaven. Some people's trying. <laughs> but that's not going to get us there. Amen. It's about receiving the promise of the Father. The Holy Ghost. It's about the Spirit of God living on the inside of us. That's pretty awesome. Amen? It's about allowing Him to make a deposit of a treasure into the soul of an earthen vessel. 
Somebody look at your neighbor and say, that's you. Somebody point to yourself and say, that's me. That's what it's all about. Amen. That's why Jesus told his disciples, don't leave Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. And he tells them in Acts 1 and 8, he said, and you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. In other words, don't try to do it on your own. You're fighting to lose. I mean, you need something greater. You need something better. You need the Holy Ghost. His neighbors say, you got to have the Holy Ghost. Amen. The only way this world is going to be delivered is to allow the moving of the Holy Ghost to work in the midst of all the stuff that's fighting it in the culture we live. The only way the drug addict is going to be uh, delivered from all that mess is to allow the Holy Ghost to deliver them and to have an experience with God that experiences in this world can't take you to. There's a high in the Lord that you can get to that nothing in this world. <laughs> You're tired of being depressed? You're tired of being defeated? If you want to be victorious, if you want to be delivered, guess what? There's a lot of ways you can try to do that. But there's only one successful way. And that is to leave the corner of this world and get back into the corner on the Lord's side and say, God, I am forsaken. You're calling me out of this corner and you're calling me over here to this corner. And I promise you, if you'll go over here to this corner, you can sustain a lot more and get victorious over a lot more in the middle. Amen. As they come back to the music, somebody tell your neighbor, say, present yourself. Show up on the Lord's side. Our text in Acts 2, the day of Pentecost was fully come. They were, they were of one accord. They were one place. They were there. They were there. Somebody say they were there. Amen. Suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. Everybody say where they were. And then there appeared unto them these cloven tongues like as a fire, and it set up on each of them. They were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. All those that were willing to present themselves in the Lord's corner that day saw him present himself. In a marvelous way. Something we still talk about over 2,000 years later. Something we're still a part of. Amen? And here's the deal. This is what's, this is what's so awesome. This is what it gets me out of. There should never be a service where somebody comes empty and leaves empty. Because you've already done the hardest part. You're here. Now some of y'all got up at 5.30 this morning. And you're, you're happy to be here. I'm, I'm glad to come to church. It's, it's, it's what we do. And I love being in the house of God. But the reality is, is that there's many, not just sinners, but there's saints. That just to be here today, you have fought all kind of junk in your mind, in your body, and you're here. Some aren't feeling well, but you're here. Some got aches in your body, but you're here. Some got all kind of stuff going on in your family, but you're still here. You've done one of the hardest things, and that is just to show up. That's pretty awesome. That's no small thing. I never take for granted somebody that's willing to get up on a day they don't have to work and come somewhere they don't have to be. That's no small thing. And we never want to take that for granted. But since you're here, hello, amen, you already got through the fight of coming, not just today, but week in and week out, you fight through it and you get here, you got kids, you got to get ready, they don't want to get up and get ready, but you get them ready and you get them to the Sunday school, and you're here. Those 120 presented that day in the upper room started out as a lot more than 120. So again, it's no small feat that you are here and you're still here. That's a big win in itself. And we celebrate that. Amen. However, 
if we're not careful, we'll fall for the trap of just presenting our bodies and never presenting our hearts. Again, it's no small feat you just being at church, and we, we don't take that for granted. That's, that's awesome. But those started out with a 500, 120 stayed. They tarried until because that's what Jesus had told them to do. I'm sure there was others in that 120 that they, 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 they were just doing it because that's what Jesus said to do. Not because they still felt like it. But it's just because it's what Jesus said to do. And they, they respected what the word of God said. And they was like, okay, I don't know. You know, I'm tired just like everybody else. That was seven days ago, God. Here I am. And yet, because they were willing to present themselves and continue to tarry, because they were willing to obey the word of the Lord, the Spirit of God swept into that place where they were like a rushing mighty wind, and everyone that was there was filled with the Holy Ghost. And because they presented themselves at Pentecost, God presented himself, and not only to them there, but the same day added to the church about 3,000 people. Because people showed up. But didn't just show up, they did what God asked them to do. So as we all stand together, I go back to what Paul told the church in Rome, in Romans 12 and 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. And in the scripture, amen, those people, they understood because they wasn't too far removed from animal sacrifice. They knew that sacrifice demanded an altar. It demanded a place to be laid, to be slain, to be in a place to where your life was, you wasn't going to be moving, you wasn't going to be talking, it was just... Here I am. <laughs> he said, present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. He filled everyone in that room that day. I believe he can still fill everyone in this room today. I said, I believe that. So as they get ready to sing, every head bowed, every eye closed. Nobody's looking around. We're going to have a corporate altar call in a moment. But if you're here today and you don't have the Holy Ghost, I'm asking you to present yourself today. Present yourself to an altar today. Oh, God can still fill you and God wants to let you experience the promise that's for whosoever will. If you've never allowed his spirit to come into your life with the evidence of speaking with other tongues we're not coming today to seek tongues but lord we're coming to seek your spirit today and he'll fill you just like he did in the book of acts if you're here today and you need delivered for something whether that be an addiction to a, a, a controlled substance or pornography or something in your life if you need delivered yeah, i want to ask you today to present yourself before god if you need healing in your body, present yourself today. Come on, don't leave saying, boy, I, God, you know, I know that he can, but he just didn't do it today. If we don't present ourselves, then God doesn't have to present himself. But I promise you this morning, if you'll present yourself, that's a presentation that God will not be late for. He's already there with healing and salvation in his hands, just waiting on somebody to come out from around the curtain and say, here I am, God, here I am, change me, here I am, save me, here I am, heal me today, deliver me today. He's there and he's waiting and he's wanting somebody to present themselves to him. And he is not late, but he is always on time. Come on, you're not going to find... In the empty altar, if you'll present yourself there today, you're going to find that he's going to meet you there. And I'm going to give you just a moment more. 
again, I'm not trying to embarrass anybody, but we've, we've talked about if you need salvation, if you need deliverance, or if you need healing, so nobody can just put you in one category. There, nobody knows your needs like you know them. But I'm asking you today, take a step of faith and say, Lord, here I am. Change me. Save me. Deliver me. It's up to you. It's up to you. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. God will meet you right there. Present yourself that sacrifice. Here I am, Lord. Come on, there's nothing in Scripture about us accepting Him, but there's a lot about Him accepting us. This is what we do, Lord. Here I am. Here I am, Jesus. I give myself to you, God. I give myself to you, Jesus. God, I know your thoughts, your ways are high.